Hi, in this video we are going to quickly see about regulation of pancreatic secretion. So this has been asked previously in many university questions like explain the composition of pancreatic juice, regulation of pancreatic exocrine secretion, describe the composition and regulation, proteolytic pancreatic enzymes etc. So in this video I will be particularly focusing on the regulation part of the pancreatic secretion. We can deal with the composition later. So when a question like this is asked, we have to first uh, write the different components that are involved. So I'll just explain the concept first. So suppose this is our stomach showing the pancreas. You can also see that there is a the ducts, there is a cystic duct as well as a pancreatic duct shown. So just like in gastric acid secretion, pancreatic secretion also occurs in phases. So the first phase is a cephalic phase, which means when we see or when we uh, have the thought of a food or smell of a food there will be increased secretion of the pancreatic juice so how does that happen again the mediator is vagus nerve just like in gastric secretion so the dorsal vagal complex will be activated which in turn will send down its impulses via the vagus nerve in order to produce increased secretion so how does vagus cause increased pancreatic secretion See, just like any other gland, the pancreas also has got an SNI part as well as the duct part. So the vagus basically increases the secretion of the SNI. So see, this is the duct part. So the vagus increases the secretion of the SNI part. Okay, so that is why the secretion if simulated by the vagus will be enzyme rich. Okay. So next is the gastric phase which again is stimulated by the vagus nerve itself. So this time what happens is, see whenever there is a distension of the stomach or the duodenum, this in turn will cause stimulation of the vagus nerve and that is why it is called a vagovagal reflex. So the gastric phase is again due to vagus nerve itself, right? And finally we've got the intestinal phase. Now this is a bit tricky because during the intestinal phase what happens is the chyme that is present in the duodenum will be highly acidic, okay? This acidic chyme will cause release of certain hormones called secretin from the S cells of the duodenum. Okay? Similarly, by the time the uh, food is in the duodenum, there will be release of fats. So some other cells called the I cells will secrete the hormone cholecystokinin. And these hormones will go into the bloodstream and this in turn will cause an increased pancreatic secretion. So here... I said there are two hormones, secretin and cholecystokinin, but their mechanism of action is different. See, secretin is produced in response to decreased pH, right? So, secretin will actually act on the duct cells so that there will be increased secretion of bicarbonate so as to neutralize that acid. Whereas, CCK will act on the SNI so as to produce an enzyme rich pancreatic secretion. So, this is the basic concept, and now we'll move on to the flow chart. So see in the cephalic phase, but it occurs when there is a sight, smell or thought of food which in turn will cause the stimulation of the dorsal vagus complex which will stimulate the vagus nerve you know, and that will act on the SNR cells to produce an increased secretion. The gastric phase occurs when the food reaches the stomach and there also there is increased pancreatic secretion because the distension of the stomach will cause a vagovagal reflex. Not only that, there is one more small mechanism that is because there are peptides in the stomach, the G cells may be activated to produce gastrin which in turn can cause a slight increase in pancreatic secretion. So this is the mechanism of cephalic as well as the gastric phase. Next, the most important phase is the intestinal phase. So when acidic chyme in the duodenum, uh, acidic chyme reaches the duodenum, the S cells will be stimulated which in turn will produce secretin. And this will cause a pancreatic secretion which is rich in bicarbonate and water because it acts on the duct cells. Whereas the fatty acids and peptides in the duodenal content will stimulate the eye cells which will produce cholecystokinin which will produce a pancreatic secretion which is rich in enzymes. So this is the outline of regulation of pancreatic secretion but in general depending on the marks you will have to elaborate more on these hormones that is secretin and cholecystokinin. So the hormones regulating the pancreatic secretion are first is secretin, 
So as I said before, they are produced from the S cells which are located deep in the glands of mucosa of the small intestine. They are present on the small intestine. They increase by carbonate secretion by the duct cells of pancreas and biliary duct. Not only that, because it acts on the duct cells, the secretion will be highly watery as well as alkaline. Okay. Now they can also augment the action of the cholecystokinin so thereby there will be secretion of enzyme rich pancreatic juice. They inhibit the gastric secretion so that they as the acidity cannot increase more than a level and they also cause an increased contraction of the pyloric sphincter. So these are the actions of secretin. Next we will see about cholecystokinin. So cholecystokinin is secreted by the mucosa of the upper small intestine from the eye cells. And the main function is contraction of gallbladder. See from the term itself, coli, coli usually means for gallbladder, right? And cholecystokinin, so something which increases the contraction of gallbladder, right? It also increases the secretion of the pancreatic juice which is rich in enzymes because they act on the SNI. They again augment the action of secretin. So secretin and CCK, they work together to produce an uh, optimum pancreatic secretion. They also inhibit gastric motility and gastric empty and enhance the motility of the small intestine and colon. So that will conclude the regulation of pancreatic secretion. So I hope this concept was clear. Thank you.